Today, we're going to go over the Q&A that Dutch did for Season 7 TBC. We're going to review the questions that he did, talk about the points that he went over, and give our feedback on them. So, question number one, after Malganus ends on the 18th, how long till Alar moves to TBC? Which I think is probably one of the most important questions. Dutch is saying it's going to be about one to two weeks. It's going to give people time to build drafts for builds, get skill cards, everything getting ready for the merch. And it looks like they've made a ton of new changes, which right now they're actually doing testing on, if I remember correctly on a different server so that's pretty good i like that one to two weeks after so we're gonna probably be expecting it on on like the 25th actually it's probably gonna be the first it's gonna be the first of next month so we're looking at like probably the first I'm, I'm gonna assume june 1st is when it's gonna be out and i have been asking this for a long time but will you allow us to share more currencies account slash server wide across all characters on our accounts a lot of us veteran players have mains we play on area 52 slash alara and would love to not have all of our currencies from league three go to waste Oh yeah, specifically things like the Mystic Runes, Orbs, Marks of Ascension, Marks of Mentorship. That would, that, yeah, that, I think that's, I think that's a pretty valid question, especially like you know putting all that investment into a league and then losing it all. You know, having it go into your other sides. I understand why you'd want to isolate it though, because if you don't isolate it, then you have different problems. So let me see what Dutch has to say about it. This is definitely on the table, but we got to get all the realms in the same core foundation first. Because yeah, Alar still doesn't have the realm bound currencies and is a prereq before we make the decision. If we merge into Alar, our characters will have draft mode or can we stay as a free pick on Alar? Characters will merge into Alar. And then you can also choose to go to area 52 at any time, which is then free pick. If you go from League 3 to Alar, you are going to be in draft mode and you are having to draft your abilities. Will the bear rarities change on Alar like Melganis, Bear Farm, Frenzy Regen, Berserk? There will be a full pass on all the rarities between Melganis and Draft and we'll be reassessing all of those for TBC. The rarity change won't likely happen before TBC launch. Rarities on Alar will certainly be changing them. We're not going to have the changes immediately, it looks like, but they are going to be reevaluating them and make the changes. Within the middle of June, they're going to probably start making some changes to this stuff. Will Area 52 still be like it is today or will it have the rarity system on free pick that Milganus has? Before I read his answer, I'm going to assume yes. That would make the most sense that they're going to they're going to look at it and then they're going to make the changes accordingly as what they like. Ah, and yeah, okay, so it's to be determined. For this one here, they're just they're like we haven't made a decision and we're still thinking on it. Will all the new REs from Melganus be available on Alar slash Area 52? Or are you not happy with the state of summon therefore won't push them live? I'm curious if they will. I know I'm pretty sure almost all of them will go to Alar for sure. Yeah, I think I think the reason why Dutch is holding on about the rarity system in Area 52 is because he put this, like, and he even linked it here. He did this big thing about the rarity system and the pros and cons behind it and why they're pushing it. And there's been some negative like feedback on it. So I think they're evaluating that before they make the change on area 52. All right. Oh yeah. So back to this question, will all the new REs from Melganis be available on area 52 slash a liar, or you're not happy with the state of them. There are a couple that are not ready for TBC and are going to be benched. Gotcha. So there's probably a few of them that are broken or OP or just don't fit well, and they're not going to bring them over. How are guild transfers going to work? Will the guild leader choose which server all player characters are automatically swapped or will person by person? Transfer will happen person by person from Alar to area 52. We'll be doing something to send guild bank tabs to the guild leader on transfer in case you decide to transfer the guild leader is still going to be able to keep their tabs going would holding prestige caches on Melganis result in any changes when going to area 52 so they are different caches and will give some or worse stuff than they would on Melganis. don't save them so he's just like don't do it it's just a terrible idea if you do this you're you're, you're fucking up you're fucking up man just don't do it <laughs> Okay, are Melganis high risk material vendor prices and auction house posting fees going to be the new default once it ends? There's a high vendor price on high risk materials on Alar as well as a higher posting fee on the auction house. I actually had no idea that this was a thing, but apparently, yes, apparently this these changes are coming through. I don't do much high risk. I don't monitor that stuff. Okay, are there any changes coming to the amount of marks of ascension needed for hands of fate quests and or is there going to be any changes whatsoever to the amounts of mark ascension that marks of war award come tbc regarding marks of war and such you should basically operate under the assumption that things from anella high risk will not be useful in tbc to lesser or de greater degree there's a high risk overhaul in tbc that's going to be a primary focus so i don't feel like that answered the question though dutch but i guess the marks of war will be useless so don't use marks of war it'll be something different in tbc 
but it doesn't answer anything about the hands of fate okay what happens to characters with the same names when merge starts this one i already had a feeling was the case primary realms will get the name priority so alar and area 52 characters have name priority which is unfortunate i wanted athena and i'm not going to be able to get athena what about athena kai i already have athena kai i made sure to get that one but i want athena athena's good i'm only athena kai on twitch because i can't get athena how did the team think micro season went should we expect more four month seasons in the future Melganus was the single best free pick realm and leak in ascension history hoggers that's good that's good we like those people got through more of the content across the board than ever before and a lot of really core issues with the game were fixed and tools were implemented to let us really scale the content in the game in the future that's a really good answer that being said i'm on the record for saying ascension will never do another league again after every league okay wait Ascension will never do another league again after every league. Leagues, especially free pick, always tend to be too fast and that results in a lot of people falling off. The focus moving forward will still probably be on seasons, but there are a few league ideas to explore in the future. Okay, so they're never going to do like back to back because it's too fast of a burnout. So I didn't expect that. I thought they were going to say, yeah, we're going to do it in the future more. But they're like, the results were incredible, but we don't want to do it in the future because it, it causes too much fall off, which I agree. It made me fall off. I couldn't, I couldn't keep up with it without doing it full time. For TBC, will we see an overhaul of the strength versus agility debate, as well as any information about spirit stacking versus spells power stacking? Likely not immediately unlocked. This is on the list though. Oh yeah, so they're aware of it. And it's it's probably just gonna be a balance thing. They're gonna figure it out, they'll balance it and they'll they'll challenge it as it as it goes. Will Area 52 get the high risk V ramp on the day of the merge or later date? The goal is to get it when Alar goes into TBC. That's so that's a one to two week after the merge. Could we get some clarification as to why the Twisting Nether debuff exists? Seems like a cope for PvP players who got who get destroyed in open world PvP. This debuff is going to get a second look as we go into TBC. But yeah, it's a pretty bad for the game when all the returning players get one shot in PvP by Nax Ramus tier players. With full REs dramatically hurts long-term population. So that being said, there are things that can be done to improve the, that debuff so that it doesn't explicitly in inflate your REs. Yeah. All right, are you planning on a better coding slash integration of changes and communication in your team to ensure working stuff doesn't break halfway through the expansion? Mailboxes, teasers, RE, shutting down the server, etc. Stuff happens. Like I feel like they've already been making big changes to like stabilize like their servers and it's been getting better over and over. But let's see, things like the mailbox bring actually often our players antivirus software is lagging our files. This is a really weird problem for us to solve as we don't exactly have control over it. We're always trying to improve though. I think noteworthy while there is plenty of our problems, Ascension is really in a better state and nearly level of an analyst that's ever been. Just gonna keep moving forward. How far are you guys into making the next league slash season? We have a really clear vision of the next few leagues slash seasons and a lot of foundational elements have been laid. I would say we have a clearer sense of what is the next season in league that any past fresh realm. That's really good. Season seven, chapter two has a lot of new features though and will be announced in the video. It's a little bit better than I thought they would do. I didn't think they would have that big of a clear vision on it, but they, they're, they're probably like, they've been like testing stuff with like ideas of like, if these work, then we'll be able to make these in the future leagues. And I think that's kind of what they've been going with. And like, it's been working out for them. Are there plans for high risk TBC recipes? Also, will Area 52 get vanilla high risk recipes if it already doesn't have them? Yes, there will be high risk TBC recipes. Vanilla high risk recipes will, re will really not be useful for TBC though. Will you do another vanity merge when the merge happens? There will be a full vanity merge between Melganus, Alar, and Area 52 at the merge. Will season seven continue into Wrath of Lich King or will it become a classic start for season eight? It will go through TBC as long as there is still significant interest and activity. There are some rarity discrepancies between Melganus and Alar. Can we expect Alar to keep its current rarities on spells like Tranquility and Explosive Shot? Are they going to be reassessed and changed? Many will uh, change to what has been done in Melganus. Okay, are you willing to share any more details on what is and is not ready to merge? What are you looking for when you look at what should or should not be merged? How does the team reach this decision? Are you regretting hosting this by yourself? <laughs> I like that last question. Things like cauterizing flames right now have some bugs and weird interactions that will likely result in it getting benched. Makes sense. We were talking about cauterizing flames and how it's OP. What is looked at for Area 52 is maintaining a sense of stability. The players of Area 52 do not like change. Yeah, yeah, you Area 52 players, you don't like change at all. And they really don't like upsets. So we try to cut anything that would disruptively as much as we can. 
the super condensed version on the broader paradigm for decision making when implementing systems and major changes we are always trying to solve fundamental problems with the game we solve the problem and assess as many orders re repercussions of that change as possible then we look at the problem the new system or change creates and assesses whether or not the new system or change creates better or worse problems and if we can solve them with the tools that are uh, being made available over time because there really are no perfect solutions moving forward on any project is the process of exchanging bad problems for better problems and not regretting it any et on the pre-made group finder tab i didn't know this was a thing that was being worked on this is being prototyped but no eta so no okay gotcha in the wake of the transfer will we get new abilities for tamed undead beasts the new tables and more that hasn't been announced will come to a lar and then it'll go to area 52 after that or lar will be the test dummy and then it'll go into area 52 once it's approved are we going to see new content releases besides new re's such as za or will we need to wait till lar reaches area 52 raid tier z is next up on area 52 but it is not coming with the merge it also isn't dependent on alar reaching that tier Ideally, it'll be released before Lar reaches that stage to give us the focus on just Area 52 for that release. I feel like Area 52 has been doing its own little like TBC working as it goes. Like it's already had a few things come out on Area 52 and it wouldn't make sense for it to be like a Lar to get up there for then Area 52 to get it. It's more like a Lar is catching up to Area 52. All right, what are the plans for getting all the new players caught up in Area 52? Clearly, you guys are prioritizing them. So how are you guys getting them caught up? It's interesting. That's a good question. What are the catch-up mechanics? The vast majority of online players on Area 52 right now are really new. There shouldn't be any crazy changes needed to get the vast majority of people on the same content. There will be a lot of general TBC quality of life and polishing happening when all realms on TBC, though. Things will, like, uh, rebirth call board quests high risk tbc overhaul and more so they're gonna make like some minor changes to call birds high risk tbc overhauls like that but like nothing crazy they're they're gonna keep most of the same i guess it's already pretty smooth for people is there going to be any other new re's being released with tbc and yes the answer is yes it's through teasers well the re's i learned from melganis come with me yes that's good i like to hear that when RE is coming to Area 52 from Melganis, in addition to the long-awaited new REs finally merged, what is going to be done about the mystic resource starvation issues many players are facing? How are people who are not out of resources, especially at a very high mystic enchanting level, supposed to explore these new REs with reasonable ease of access? This is a very good question. I hate. I had this problem, like resource starvation on Melganis, and I hated it. And don't get me wrong, it's not everyone. There's a lot of people that are fine. There's like, if you play enough, you definitely will get through it. But there are definitely players that deal with this problem of starvation. So I am curious. So we'll keep making tweaks to the Mystic Rune and Orb acquisition. We'll be looking at different ways to obtain runes and orbs and seeing what we can do to improve it. Account-wide runes and orbs are also on the table. Right now, the system caps at 50 rerolls per Mystic Enchant or Extract. It is very likely that in the future, there will... There is a more systematic rework mystic enchanting because it is one of more dead features on ascension at this point oh i love it okay it is out of the scope of season seven but they are aware that it's a problem and that they're going to work on it which i love to hear because it is such an outdated system i agree it's just like it's like pigeon holding for no reason at this point will the three skill cards regular slash gold be included in draft rework as seen in Felforge? there will be something different that will be featured in the video they're going with a different route instead of the three skill cards regular slash gold which is like what you can start with when you're leveling will there be any use of old high risk materials or will it be entirely be replaced by tbc i'm pretty sure it's going to be entirely replaced it will all basically be replaced by the tbc overhaul will we have a high risk crafting system implemented in area 52 at some point yes which is awesome since we are getting mythic dungeons and TBC, will crafting gear see a slight buff to make them more attractive to craft instead of just running NM0 and getting gear? Classic crafting gear got random bonus stats, which would be nice seeing that in TBC as well. So this is definitely on the table. It won't come with the merge or TBC launch. Random bonus stats are definitely an option though. I don't know about the random bonus stats. I felt like that RNG was something that Blizzard did and they ended up getting rid of it because it went down the wrong path. But I like the idea of trying to promote promise on crafting over just running. Don't get me wrong. I'm someone that's just going to run mythics anyways. I prefer mythic grinding. 
but it is a good comment to like bring up. If after the merge, some enchants are overlapped, duped on a Lara slash Area 52, will they be transferred into Mystic Extracts or will there be nothing out of them? Your total level will be calculated with your total enchants at the moment. So it'll adjust it based on how many enchants you have. So when TBC comes out, will experience be tweaked from 1 to 60 so prestiging won't take longer than it already does? This goes for a Lara. No plans to change this at the moment. Can we just keep our vanity collection going from one season to the next season? Feels stupid to rebuy the same amount. All right. In the future, we'd like to explore a system where the seasonal DP bundle unlocks your vanity collection. I really hate right now that people don't get access on the new seasons to stuff they got in the past. But if we did this outright, Ascension could not afford to exist. That makes sense. They need it for money. So a vanity sink item in the bundles with all the new cosmetics is something that we want to explore in the future. Get it. Free to play. Pay to win, get it to buy, makes sense. Will we ever see any kind of a take to make PvP on Area 52 more interesting? By that, I don't mean those half hard attempts like raiding, locking tabards, or weapon illusions. Yeah, we need to talk uh, more time to focus on arena season rewards. That being said, a big gating factor to putting more time into PvP high end rewards on Area 52 is getting more people involved in Area 52 PvP. The reality is that as most of Ascension community does not like the end game Area 52 PvP as it is right now, they quit participating well before rewards are even a factor. They want to work on it, but yeah, no one really plays the end game, which then causes the problem. However, are, are the currently available Marks of War not going to have the same effect impact in TBC? You really need to know the accommodate, accommodate if you want to use them or sell them and keep them invested. Marks of War will still work, but they won't drop in TBC anymore. Any plans for Holy Healing Spell REs? Currently, majority of Holy Healing Spells don't even have one RE, and the main culprit on why Nature Hots is, has dominated healing entirely. Yeah, I think that's actually a really good statement. A lot of the REs support Nature Builds right now, and Holy Builds don't have as much. Big RE updates in the works. Fantastic. I'm going to assume we'll probably see that mid-June. Will the high-risk TBC recipes you spoke about earlier be obtained other ways than running normal heroic M0 dungeons? We're already so far into TBC in Area 52 that it would be straight up painful to farm lower tier dungeons just for recipes. Maybe they could drop in Mythic Plus boxes or raids. They'll, most, they'll certainly drop in raids. Mythic Plus is to be determined. It is on the table. Oh, I, I would honestly be super doped if it, if it dropped in Mythic Plus. Now, in saying that, though, I actually think that it is not good for it to drop in Mythic Plus. As a game developer, as someone with like a personal opinion on this, I actually think that that is actually more harmful because mythic plus is a very spammy grindy system that already rewards you really well with loot just by doing it if you then add in that you can also get uh like really good materials by doing it i don't know it just starts to negate other effects but if, it, if they put it in i'm going to be super happy as a player because then i don't have to do high risk farming i'll just spam mythic plus Ascension Nax is very interesting and a lot of fun. Will there be any incentive to go back and do classic raid content, time walking events in TBC? That'll be really cool. I hope there is time walking. Yeah, but this is still really cool. Yeah, it's a call board quest, but it's really cool that you can once a week or once a day do a dungeon from old times or do a raid from old times. Will Malganus and Alar PvP seasons end before the merge? Since Malganus season started two days ago, we will likely just merge them, but this will still be just, just being discussed. We want to make sure people on Meganus actually have the opportunity to get the gear. Honestly, I don't know what they should do for something like this. In my opinion, I don't know. I, I would assume that it's going to end before it, but making it continue when it merges makes sense too. How are you into coding Black Temple and Mount Hygel? Can we expect this to drop on Alar? Baseline Hygel and Black Temple are completely scripted. No custom mechanics. If Alar keeps a strong player base, we'll uh, keep releasing content for it. Oh, no custom mechanics yet. Darn it. I was hoping that we were going to say there's going to be custom mechanics. Will we be getting more draft pick content instead of free pick? Much less of a uh, hurdle for newer players to jump into. I agree 100%. And I know that the community is obviously divided. There's a huge community that loves free pick. A huge community that loves draft pick. But I honestly really lean into draft pick. And I feel like it's so much easier for people to start with and also because like it, you don't have as much looked at right when you do free pick you have all these options and all these things and you don't know what to pick or go with but in draft pick it's like here's three options pick an option and you're like oh i have to pick between these three that's easy 
or easier. So yes, Milganus was the biggest free pick realm in history, but draft literally had two to three times more players and kept everyone engaged and active much longer. Alara is going to be the first TBC draft ever. Pog, I didn't even know that. That's awesome. Can we start leveling Blood Elf slash Drain Knight on the merge or do we need to wait? Have to wait until TBC actually opens. It is weird. The Drain Knight and Blood Elf zones are like hidden on the Outland map. So it is tricky to enable those without people sneaking into Outland. Will tunes native to Alar be reset to match the tunes coming from Alganis? Will it be able to use skill cards at 60 or will it require the prestige to use skill cards since tunes from Alganis will be coming wiped fresh and maintain event? This is actually a really good question. I actually really like this question. So the question basically is, is when people come over, they're going to be level 60 and they're going to be fresh slate because they have to reroll. And the question is, can you put skill cards in so that you have your predetermined stuff when you do your first rolls, which is what you would do to manipulate on um, on Alar. So like, for example, if you hit level 60 and you put certain skill cards in and then you unlocked a new spec, you could then re-roll with those skill cards already in place. So I don't really understand the question. You can DM me and explain and I'll answer. So Dutch didn't understand the question. Unfortunate. That is a really good question though. It is definitely a little bit complex because it's a little gamey on the on like how people do it on alert. What will happen to Fellforge tunes after the merge? Will enchants carry over to the normal tunes as well during the merge? They will be merged, but a lot of things will not come with them from Melganus to Alar. Drafts will likely be completely reset. This Fellforge event on Melganus was focused on testing the new draft foundation. Will the new TBC spells at level 60 on Melganus be available on Alar during the one to two weeks between the merge? They'll be available right away. Nice, we'll get the new spells right away. Any possibility of freeing up names for inactive tunes in Alar and Area 52, especially those tunes coming from Alganis? Not at the moment. No! No, that was my hopes to get Athena. I would like you to make it one week, please. Or make a poll slash vote to see if more people want week, one week or two week wait. Well, the, that, that's not up to you, person. They're making that choice based on if they have it ready to go on one week or two weeks. Yeah, see, if it was possible, we'd do it in, in a week. This is more of a matter of how fast we can physically manage the type of code. A lot of crucial team members got sick recently and we lost one to two weeks of good work. And I am slowly coming to the realization when you work nonstop, making up lost time is kind of impossible. It's true. Does this include tameable undead demons? They were my favorite feature in Melganis. I honestly didn't like this feature. I never used them, but I didn't like them. But tameables will come to Area 52, which is good for a lot of people. I personally didn't like them. Are you planning any pre-release events on Alar before TBC go live, such as the Skirt Invasion for Nax? I hope so. That'd be really cool. We'd love to do this, but this development cycle is extremely technical and involved to, uh, to pull of. Just making these merges, transfers, and shifts into TBC is going to take 100% focus. So we'll see what is reasonable that we can do for those one to two weeks. It would be really nice if they did do it, but if they did nothing, I think it's 100% fair considering the factor that, yeah, if they need all hands on deck, they need all hands on decks to get, make sure this is smooth. I'd rather have as much of a painless transition than to have a fun little entertainment event for two weeks. Mana Forge Barrier, is that coming to Alar in Area 52 or will you need to look at it before doing that? There will be changes to Mana Forge Barrier, thank fucking God, to make it uh, make sense in the context of TBC, but it will come to Alar for sure. Area 52 will be determined. No, Alar is gonna get Mana Forge Barrier. I never liked Mana Forge Barrier. It seems so broken. Did anyone see where he addressed what uh, what the point of drafting is when rarities are going to be changed? We're going to change as many rarities as we can at the time of merge. Yeah, which makes sense. So when you so you do your prestiging after the merge, not before the merge, preferably. Because then you get the new spells and all the new rarities. What will happen to our various currencies, such as Raiders Commendations, Marks of Ascensions with the merge? Will they be still be useful or are they getting wiped or something else entirely? You'll keep all of your currencies. Not all of them are relevant in TBC, though. Raider comms are not used in TBC at the moment. So you can keep your currencies, use what's useful, get rid of whatever's not useful. What catch-up mechanics are you planning on implementing for new casual returning players? I have a big fear that the population will fall off fairly fast with how the rarity draft is currently operating. Like you said, with new players leaving due to getting rolled by new people, uh, by people next year. What is the difference by a new player getting rolled by a bis rolled build? Yes, there are some things coming that expand draft, but also act as a catch up. Draft players also have a lot of reason to prestige, which has proven to be a great way to getting ac uh, acquainted with the game and build up marks and such. Draft kind of dances around that problem because people just keep prestiging and leveling up in battlegrounds and such. 
that's fair so it's like yes that's a problem but for new players you're probably just prestiging anyways and a lot of people already are, are encouraged to prestige so it's a it's a cycle of just replaying the leveling process which then puts you on equal footing with these people to get your build and also to learn the game and get better at it which i agree i love the prestige system and free pick makes it feel so bad will we see mythic plus gear upgrades cost less for or dungeons give more mythic coins currently it takes over 100 runs to fully upgrade a single piece of gear yes i agree this is absolutely ridiculous that it takes over 100 runs to get to mythic 30 which obviously is probably never going to happen but the factor that like it could happen is really painful will my rexar vanity come to area 52 and alar whenever whatever you have on Meganus will come to area 52 and alar not anything else only Melganis will transfer over your vanity any chance high risk leveling can get some attention it seems everyone forgoes it for bgs now season 7 chapter 2 has some changes that should improve this that's good i don't like high risk leveling but i think high risk leveling definitely needs its place it makes the world feel alive it feels more encouraging than just instances and i am an instance leveler i will tell that right now i will dungeon level as much as i can at all times because that's what i like to do Uplight rework slash uh, gladiator stands DPS on the table in the near future. The answer is yes to that for all you hoplite and gladiator lovers. Since this wasn't preset in the league slash alarm, will it be pre uh, present come TBC? Mythic Plus at the moment is a rough spot having to climb 150 key levels to find a challenge slash cap. Yeah, there are some changes coming soon. That's so good. I'm glad that there's going to be a better like scaling. Are the hero architect finally going to be made available on a liar when it moves into tbc i don't see why there can't be a working version of it sure you can't pick the build but you can still use it for guides or people who make the builds can easily adapt them yes we're going to adapt the hero architect to be usable for draft in some capacity may not come directly with merge yeah i don't understand how the hero architect is going to work on a liar because when you draft you obviously can't take the abilities i guess like you could take the talents i don't know it feels weird and like I also hate the hero architect because it takes away my job. I make guide videos on builds. Don't take that from me. <laughs> Actually, you know what? No, no, I'm going to do the other way around. I'm going to go through the hero architect and I'm going to find builds. I'm going to do them and then I'm going to make videos on them. Why is it that area 52 has been chugging through a slow TBC release cycle with many laws? Yet by the sounds of it, Alar will be getting far more content than area 52 for TBC. Why are we going to have to wait for the overhauls and a new team of abilities again? But a lot of things that season leagues get are unpolished, unstable, experimental, and Area 52 has long been the realm where there ha is a bit more reliability and more gradual changes. This is one of those things where you can really can't have both. Tamable Undead and Demons are coming to Area 52 with the merge alongside the new legendary REs and the systematic TBC updates. ZG is up for the next for Area 52. Oh, your seasons are done. Dump your characters in Area 52. Area 52 is very stable, just like it takes everything that's good and puts it in there, but doesn't take any of the bad and just kind of like keeps a steady pace. Whereas like seasons and leagues are like spiking up and down constantly. All right, will there be a way to get the legendary skill cards? You can get legendary cards, but you can't convert epics into legendaries. I have so many epics that I just want to turn into legendaries. Can you split your characters? One goes to Larm, one area goes to 52. Yes, which is awesome. Will the personal loot system from Melganis carry over to Area 52 slash Alara for raids and Mythic Dungeons? No plans for this right now. It's available for Mythic Plus, however. Will TBC get Raiders, Commendation, System, and Area 52 slash Alara? I think a lot of League 3 players are used to that system and would like to know if it will still exist in TBC. Once TBC is further in progression, closer to Sunwell, it is likely to happen in some form. This likely won't happen before then, though. Okay, let's see. Why can't we just move on with TBC content on Area 52? Why not just release PvP Season 3? With the new raids like Hygel and, and Black Temple. Why so complicated? We are in this state for almost two years now. I don't want another server. I don't want another rarity system. I don't want new spells and talents. I just want TBC content to continue. The vast majority of Ascension community is not even making it into Tempest Keep. These seasons and leagues have aimed to solve systematic problems with a game that just releasing new raid content cannot do. This strategy over the years has allowed us to significantly expand the team, fix stability, fix performance, grow the population, and get more content done, which inevitably results in a higher quality raid. As we solve these problems, preventing people from getting into the end game, focusing purely on the incremental release of expansion content will happen naturally. 
There is a shift happening right now to moving towards more endgame TBC content as all realms will be on the TBC's DA is up next. Will Marks of Ascension prices remain the same for buying Hands of Fate into TBC slash LR? These will change for sure. Okay, so the costs will change. The Fellforge event was removed from LR timeline after TBC. Will you do another Fellforge on LR season seven? Yes, which is nice. I, I actually want to really do a Fellforge. I didn't join this last one and I haven't joined the previous ones. But I do want to try and get into Fellforge. With all the new incentives to fully invest into one character, are there any plans on letting us have more than two primary professions? I agree to that. I would, I'd like to have more professions, especially if... Because, yeah, I do everything on one character. Could we potentially see some of the TBC crafted weapons, example, Fel, Stel, Steel, Reaper, be turned into things that are more useful for the majority of people? Like a TBC version of Nightfall? These recipes are historically not really of use to anyone and are often just ignored completely. While a lot of people do generally want a bard-esque type thing. Yes, yes, I love this question. The bard-esque role is so good. TBC crafting will definitely get more systematic upgrades in the future. It is out of the scope of immediate merge. Unfortunate, no. All right, so this person's honest concern is PVP. With all the new influx of players and so on, the MMR system is still a concern. Any rework plans? I really don't like sitting 20 plus minutes in queues. Yeah, wait times for PvP kind of sucks. The real solution is a system and foundation that more players actually want to participate in. The current status quo way PvP works on Area 52 just isn't platable to the vast majority of Ascension player base. It's finding a way to make the PvP more enjoyable and then that will get more people to play it. And when you get more people to play it, a toggle for nightmare mode would be cool if we completed the challenge before on that specific character any plans on that it is on the table and it is being explored so like we're gonna form teams and we're gonna prestige on a spec on nightmare mode you guys are gonna get to 60 and then you're gonna switch to your other spec that's for raiding so that you can raid in nightmare mode and it's like my god like what it's like so many like hoops that you have to go through just to play the game on nightmare Will skill cards that we have on Alar from before be useful? Work after the merge and the characters? The answer is yes. Is there any plans for old legendary REs? Most of them are dead. Yes, reworks for older unused legendary REs will happen. Will there be a change to blood forging PVE gear with the bloody jar? To me, it feels like most people in pugs just need, uh, need on the vast majority of the loot just to blood forge and sell it. I know this can be uh, fixed either specifically the loot rules or just running with your guild, but not everyone has time for this. Yeah, that's just a problem though. That's just that's just the people. Like you can't you can't fix this. So here's the thing. Okay, so when they came up, it's gonna have problems with pugs because obviously everyone is just going to need on everything because why the fuck not? No one's gonna be able to dispute it. Like you're everyone's everyone's wants everything, it, but like in loot rules or in guilds that's going to be different. It's going to be more structured. And it's going to be more beneficial. I, I think it's just, it's just a poison that you kind of have to take. You have to pick your people properly. So let me see what Dutch says. So it's definitely a problem, but it isn't obvious to me. This is a worse problem than the problem that would be created by just getting rid of the jar, which would basically be that gearing up to bridge the already massive PVP gap would be significantly larger. Very true. This is a bad versus better problem scenario at the moment. And I don't personally have an epic solution. There are already community-based systems in, in place to help solve this. It's a problem because the community lets it be a problem. Uh, I don't think that there is a developer mechanical system that they can do that wouldn't bring its own poisons to cause problems. I think at this point, it's just healthier to let the community decide how they want to have it. Have it. Because you know what? There are some runs where people just say all bars go and everyone just fucking rolls and someone gets 15 pieces of loot and someone gets zero. Let's say I have a character on Mugganus with six specs. On merge, I want to prestige slash draft all the six specs with skill cards. Will I have to prestige six times to make this happen or will there be a system that lets us draft all the specs at the same time the first time we prestige? So you can still only prestige one spec at a time, but you won't have to prestige to draft the baseline of those specs. If you use the skill cards at level one before activating that spec, it'll, this will likely work out. Okay, so it's going to work the same as if you unlocked a new spec when you first move your Melganus characters over. So you're going to have spec one, and this is going to let you roll your, your, your spec. If you prestige that, put your skill cards in, level to 60, then you, un then you unlock all your specs again. You'll be able to roll all those specs with the new skill cards that you've put into the slots that you just did while leveling. 
very important very important if you're looking for a very specific build while moving a Melganus character over will will hands of fate reset be on tbc launch or will you have to pay grizzly 2000 marks per quest to refine tune your favorite spec we have never done a hand of faith quest chain reset it just creates an enormous gap between those who have started earlier than others it is one of those things where no matter how much you play you could never bridge that gap we just gotta do we just gotta find other solutions will upgrading bloodforge gear already come to alar on the 18th of may sanguine will come tbc will have its own high risk overhaul though is there any plans to eventually add an Arteric Valley Battlegrounds? If we add Arteric Valley, it would be like a day event or something and not available all the time. There are some new BG content coming. Do you think it's fair that the free pick who are moving over to merge with the draft only have one week to make builds? Most Milganus players have a huge amount of marks of ascension saved up. The paired with the systematic additions coming to the skill cards and new abilities and such paired with 10 new levels. This shouldn't be a problem. I agree. It really shouldn't be a problem. If you're really ready to go, you can prestige nonstop. Like that whole like one to two weeks to make builds, there are going to be so many people prestiging. Everyone's going to be a busy bee being like, hook me up. Like, give me, give me runs going. Well, I understand the focus on cross class RE design. Is there going to be anything done for single class builds? There's a lot of us that just want to play established classes for a gameplay fantasy with either additional tools from other classes or different play styles that might offer compared to regular WoW. So classes gameplay really has manifested on three levels, toolkits, talents, damage kits. Up to now, Ascension is only really heavy on one and two, and not so much three. So really one and two had been the focus for years prior to now and thinking there are really a lot of options that are, only, are going to anywhere and remain valuable. We are not going to make playing a class with the tools from other classes obsolete or anything. When are the Mythic Plus leaderboard updates gonna happen? This is live right now, but it isn't super obvious. Oh, you can you can filter by dungeon? Are we keeping our gold because vanity flipping prices are insane on Melganus and that would just carry over to the other realms? The rich get richer and blah. Alar has seriously deflation pressures uh, on the game. There are a lot more gold sinks relevant to character progression and has ways of absorbing a lot of excess gold in the economy. You keep your gold. It's very true. Alar burns gold like crazy. Did you fix the legendary, uh, the two legendary cap for more epics in the draft system? Yep. A lot of weird quirks that were deeply rooted in the old draft system have been fixed. Oh my God. Yes. The old draft system being fixed. Thank God. There were some weird ways to manipulate and freak it out. Also, what about the warlock armor bundle as a bear being able to swap off ice armor for molten armor? If there's a thunderclap DPS is super convenient. There is a wait. There is a new way or no way into looking at approaching bundles that kind of give the best of all worlds without the current drawbacks of lengthy tooltips, extra imposed AE costs, etc. Bundles have a lot of opportunity to expand the toolkit. You have access to give you real freedom and dynamic. I honestly love the bundles. When I found out they made those bundle changes, they were really cool. All right, awesome. We have just gone over the entire Q and A that Dutch did.